This place is fucking boring. Wish somebody would burn it to the ground. Ah! Oh no! It's a teenage apocalypse! Oh my god! Scarlet and welcome to Trash Cinema. Today we'll be doing things a little differently. We'll also be discussing a bunch of queer stuff. Gay shit. So if that's not something you're comfortable with, maybe clear off now. Or you know, stay and perhaps challenge some of your own perceptions if you're feeling spicy. With that said, let me tell you about a trilogy of films that helped a much younger me come to terms with and learn to celebrate the true nature of my sexuality and identity. As a degenerate queer trans Bog witch? Ah! Greg Araki is an American filmmaker and frequent contributor to the new queer cinema movement, largely through a trilogy of films widely known as the Teenage Apocalypse Trilogy. Characterized by surreal tone, Generation X attitude, and themes of youth alienation, ambiguous sexuality, drugs, death, and violence, these films aren't strictly about the end of the world or even linked to each other by characters or narrative thread. Instead, what connects the cinematic trio thematically is the genuine feeling that the world is in fact ending for the characters in each narrative, a perfect encapsulation of that profound feeling of impending doom that comes from being a troubled teenager and having, well, Pretty much anything go wrong. CATASTROPHIZATION! The trilogy consists of 1993's Totally Fucked Up, 95's The Doom Generation, and 97's Nowhere, each made with a bigger budget and star-studded cast than the last. All focus on teenagers or young adults as central characters. All feature varying degrees of queerness and sexual fluidity, and all of them to some degree escalate into a clusterfuck of chaos, death, and nightmare logic by the climax. As a young, often bewildered queer trans woman still living in boy mode in 2007, discovering these films was something of an epiphany. Someone had actually gone and made these energetic, hyper-violent, super-engaging queer films for and about young people. Especially for youths like me, who were maybe a bit confused, or still figuring out their queerness and just who they were in general. No longer would I suffer the frat heteroness of an American pie or road trip. Now I had my own films that actually spoke to my feelings and experiences as a young person. The Teenage Apocalypse Trilogy. Also, but I'm a cheerleader and interview with a vampire. But those are stories for another video. <laughs> Totally Fucked Up documents the often dysfunctional lives of six disenfranchised gay teens, including one played by the devastatingly gorgeous James Duval, who've effectively formed their own family unit as they struggle to get along and navigate life in the face of various daunting obstacles, including drug abuse, homophobia, HIV, and suicide. Araki classified it as a kind of cross between avant-garde experimental cinema and a queer John Hughes flick. I kind of like to think of it as queer Degrassi for young adults. It's informative, relatable, riveting, raw, honest, and exuberant. Out of the three films, it's probably the most experimental, and while I love it, I must admit that it may prove a bit inaccessible for some viewers due to the presentation. Totally Fucked Up is reasonably linear in terms of story, but is presented largely as a sort of fictionalized video diary, which is structurally episodic and split into 15 chapters, each detailing parts of the lives and romances of the six central characters, before culminating in an epilogue section directly after a terrible tragedy. All I really want is to be happy for like one second be able to look around and not just see shit. Say, hey, it's a beautiful day. I want to enjoy life while I'm still young enough to appreciate it. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? I don't have too much else to say about this one except go watch it. It's definitely Iraqi's most underrated film. The Doom Generation, on the other hand, is a sex score and action-packed cult classic with much broader appeal, and also happens to be the first of the trilogy that I experienced. The film follows troubled and rebellious teen lovers, Amy Blue and Jordan White, Fuck. who party, This place is so fucking boring, I wish someone would burn it to the ground, wash the Nine Inch Nails, Can we just get the fuck out of here? Okay. And chance upon an impossibly handsome drifter named Xavier Red. Wake up, cocksucker! Time to die! 
After Xavier accidentally kills the store clerk. The trio embarks on a journey full of sex, violence, hazy sexuality, murder, shoegaze music. That is the stupidest fucking name I've ever heard. And psychotic strangers who insist they're connected to Amy's past. Sunshine. Give me some money. Sunshine, is that you? I think you've been mixed up with someone else. Look, lady, I don't know who you are, but has I'm... this guy shot you full of dope and brainwashed you like all the others? You're high, aren't you? It's me, George. You're poopsie. You're snuggly bear. Look, just make my breath. I don't know who the fuck you think I am. Will you just do me a favor and evacuate? Built playfully as a heterosexual movie by Greg Araki, the Doom Generation awakened things in my little 20-year-old brain that I had no idea were in there. I mean, like, have sex with two people at the same time? Mm-hmm. It's quite possibly the most important movie in helping along the development and acceptance of my queerness and the beginnings of my transness. The idea that my feelings were somehow abnormal or shameful aggressively swept aside as I watched this trio of attractive alt misfits express their wildest thoughts and desires in an open, playful, and often ambiguous way, all while surrounded by complete chaos. Tell me where she is, or you're gonna have a mangled stump in place of that fairy face ears. It made me realize that otherness could be a strength. That there were other folks out there that felt the same way that I did, but all in different ways. It cleansed my palate of the last remaining bitter hints of ingrained homophobia, sexism, and self-repression as I watched the protagonist's sexy, dark, super queer story unfold. You're, uh, giving me an erection. What I'm basically trying to say is The movie made me gay! No, it really didn't. But it did help me, and probably a lot of other queer kids who are in their 30s now, learn about how fluid an individual sexuality and self-expression can be. I've been wanting one forever, but... I can't decide on a design I like enough to... You know... Wear on my body for like the rest of my life. It's a big commitment. Sure do like yours a lot, though. Like, it's very clear, without any of them ever saying it expressly, that all three of these folks want to bang each other, and then they do. A pee. Right now? It's not like I want to get up and go out of the fucking freezing cold, you know. Nature calls it fucking hollers. And then this happens. What? Watch me help your little fairy boy toy shuffle off this mortal coil. But that is part of the queer experience too. These weird, nightmare, fascist jock bullies represent the very real existence of violent homophobia, puritanical oppression, and a profound fear and perhaps subconscious jealousy of general otherness. Kiss your puny, worthless cock. Goodbye. Now I don't know about you, but I was picked on a lot for very specific things as a kid. Mainly being effeminate, boy if those bullies could see me now. And that therefore, I must be a gay. These experiences meant that by the time I got to high school, I was conditioned to be uncomfortable with or even disgusted by any kind of queerness. And to make matters worse, some hack fraud doctor assigned me the wrong gender at birth, which conditioned me by early teenhood to overcompensate for and play up to a masculine identity that never fit who I was in the first place. These guys... <laughs> to me at least... Represent all that. Basically the film succeeds at celebrating queerness, and the central characters have a great time because of it but all in a world that is constantly attacking them from several angles for reasons that are impossible for them to comprehend. Six dollar, sixty-six cent. Hey, Bartholomew, what's going on? Bitch. I'm gonna find her. And then I'm gonna kill her. Culminating in a very real-feeling moment to end what is otherwise a very surreal narrative. You want a Dorito? In sections of the film, literal signs of the end times pop up. 
and the world seems to be crumbling around the protagonists. It's almost as if the apocalypse is actually going on, and they just don't care or notice. They just kind of ignore it, and continue to do whatever in spite of it. The Doom Generation is very important to me, and it's honestly one of my favourite movies ever. Rise and shine, monkey butt. Go watch now. The uncut version only. The final film in this glorious trilogy is simultaneously the most broadly accessible MTV generation influenced of the three, while also proving easily the most bizarre, eclectic, and surreal by a long shot. Art school, riot girl, graphic violence, religion, Kafka, sex, open relationships, drugs, rollerblading, bondage, parties, romance, gun-toting death cults, a star-studded cast of up-and-coming actors, so many characters, and alien abductions. This film has it all, incorporating this literal clusterfuck of concepts, characters, and themes into an exciting, sexy, and very 90s piece of art for the alt and arty queer kids of that generation, as well as having plenty for a broader audience to enjoy throughout. Meet Dark. It's dark, like absence of light. Wait, Dark? Or uh, Dork, like we call him. Actually, there are quite a few classic character names in this one. Lucifer, Cowboy, Dingbat, Egg, Juicy Fruit, Elvis, Ducky, Hand job? Come on, hand job. Quit screwing around. What? Anyway, Nowhere's story follows a young man named Dark. Mmm, Dark. On his journey through navigating an open relationship, getting his college work done, spending all his money on CDs, and looking for love in a world he fears ending up alone in. Just one person in this huge, horrible, unhappy universe who can hold me in their arms and tell me everything's gonna be okay. Oh, and he keeps seeing weird aliens zapping people. I swear, Trudy, you can be sick. And science at the end times approaching. This film is fast, funny, disturbing, self-aware, has a great soundtrack, and sells its ridiculous premise without going too ironic or sarcastic with the tone. I want to kill! I want to kill! I want to kill! Yeah, it's campy, but it's also quite horrific in parts. It's your sister. And hides some deeper meaning beneath its fairly vapid characters and events. I'm out of here. Kafka esque. Hey! <laughs> Gregoraki's Teenage Apocalypse trilogy is here, queer, and probably full of poppers and beer, and has been for quite a few years now. It's been an important part of my life, and the three films contained within are some of my favourite non-horror titles of all time. I strongly recommend all three, with the Doom Generation being my favourite, mainly for personal and nostalgic reasons. Followed closely by Nowhere and Totally Fucked Up in equal parts, but for totally different reasons. Nowhere is... just great fun, to be honest. And Totally Fucked Up is a pretty important queer movie, with pretty raw depictions of gay youth in the 90s within. So if any of this rant made sense to you, or maybe even sounded good, I urge you to go and watch all these films. The Doom Generation at the very least. Oh, and really make sure you get your hands on the uncut version. The theatrical cut edits down many of the best scenes. Weakening context and literally ruining the film! I've been Scarlet, and you've been watching me ramble about 90s queer cult cinema. If you like what you saw, maybe subscribe? Share a video with some friends? Anyways, bye for now, and until next time, goodbye, don't die!